What we're going to talk about now is simply some keys to self-motivation. And all of us have motivation of some sort. I define motivation as the desire to achieve that which you believe to be worthwhile. And many people go through life never getting in touch with their greatness because of the lack of motivation to push themselves or because they have not found something that they believe to be worthwhile to challenge them. I heard a poem once that said, um, many a flower has bloomed unceasingly and wasted sweetness upon the cold desert air. It's translated that means simply that many a talented persons have gone unnoticed and the world never had a chance to be exposed to their talent because that person did not take the time to begin to express or to demonstrate or to motivate themselves in the direction to bring that which they came into the universe to bring. How can you measure your motivation? How can you evaluate where you are on a scale of one to 10? Let's do this for ourselves mentally. How do you rate yourself from one to 10? Your mental attitude about yourself, how you feel about you, how you feel about life. How do you rate yourself on a scale of one to 10 in terms of your physical appearance, in terms of your health? Do you take care of yourself? Are you allowing yourself to get overweight and out of shape? Are you conscious of your health? Are you watching the food that you take into your body do you make a deliberate effort to exercise? You know, it was George Burns. He said, we cannot help getting older, but we don't have to get old. And many of us get old before our time because we don't take time to take care of ourselves. Your environment is a very good indicator on a scale of one to 10. Is it what you want it to be? Do you find it desirable? Are you satisfied? The job or career that you're involved in. Someone said that 85% of the American public unhappy with their jobs. Are you spending eight hours a day just doing time? Doing something that you don't find challenging, that does not make you stretch mentally, that does not stimulate you, that does not inspire you. Something that you don't find a sense of fulfillment in it. If you're doing that day in and day out, it has to affect how you feel about yourself, your level of motivation. Your relationships. What kind of impact is it having on your life? Is it nourishing or is it a toxic relationship? Does it drain you or does it build you up? Ask yourself that. How motivated are you to do something about it? Your contribution, your actions. What are you giving? Many people will leave the universe without a trace. No one will know they were here. And in fact, under their name, we could put under there, not used up. Will anybody know that you came this way? What contribution are you giving? What will you leave? What will be different because you came this way? Someone once said that life is our gift to us, that God has given us, and how we live our lives is our gift to God. What kind of gift are you formulating? Is this a gift that you like to take back and do something else before you turn it in? Think about that. What can we do? What are some of the keys that we can begin to use to motivate ourselves when our batteries run low? Because I don't care who you are, I don't care what you do, at some time you are going to get tired. At some time you're going to get in a rut, seem like nothing you do works out right. At some times it just seems like you just don't have the wherewithal or the will to do anything. That sometimes you act like you're punch drunk. You're just wading through life, just doing time, day in and day out, looking at non-discriminatory television, anything that's on, just looking. <laughs> and depressed, feeling powerless, feeling useless, and bored. What do you do? How do you get yourself out of a rut? How do you, when you know you can do more than what you've been doing and you're not doing it and you're discontent with where you are, you get angry at yourself. How do you get out of that rut? How do you motivate yourself? One of the things that we must do is that we must be involved in working on achieving self-mastery. You must work on yourself continuously. 
Never be satisfied with yourself. Always know that as you invest the effort and time on you, that's the greatest ability that human beings have above animals. See, a dog can't be anything but a dog. Tree can't be anything but a tree. Human being, you've got unlimited potential. You can put effort on you, and by concentrating on you and developing you, you can transform your life wherever you are right now. So you want to work on yourself. You want to read books that inspire you and motivate you. You want to listen to tapes over and over and over again. And I suggest that you listen to tapes when you first get up in the morning. You want to control the spirit of your day. When you first wake up in the morning, your mind is operating at 10.5 wave cycles per second. That's when the subconscious mind is most impressionable. Whatever you hear in the first 20 minutes when you wake up, that will affect the spirit of your day. When you listen to tapes, listen with relaxed belief. Believing that this can happen for you. And by listening to them, listen to them over and over and over again. And you will get a breakthrough. You can listen to the same tape for months and all of a sudden you hear something you never heard before. It have a special meaning for you. Or read the same book over again and you find some special insight. You said, I can't believe I didn't see that the first time. So you want to be involved in developing yourself. Most people won't do that. Most people won't take that kind of effort and invest that kind of energy in themselves because they will fall prey to that conversation within. Oh, don't do that. You don't have time. You are too busy. You're too caught up in the rat race. Most people won't do that. Well, they won't take time to go to lectures. They won't take time to go to seminars. They won't take time to, to go to classes to improve themselves. And as you continue to work on yourself, you will begin to expand your vision of yourself. You begin to work towards self-mastery and you will begin to see it reflect itself in all the dimensions of your life, your mental life, your physical life, your social life, in your relationships, your monetary life. So concentrate on developing yourself because if you don't, I guarantee you that you will make a settlement and most people have and most of us already have. What kind of settlement have you made with your life? You know when we make settlements, out-of-court settlements, you've heard them? That means that you decided to take something less than what you originally wanted to get had you gone into court. And the reason that you settled outside of court is because you didn't believe that you can get it. So you made an out-of-court settlement. Many of us are making in-life settlement. We're settling for less than what we actually deserve. We don't feel good about it, but we make it work in our minds. We'll come up with some kind of excuse to make it all right. What kind of settlement have you made with your life? Many of us settle for less than what we want out of relationships because we don't have the courage to change them. I had a seminar I used to do called, Are You Living Together or Dying Together? <laughs> Many people are just dying together. Gladys Knight used to have a song that says, Neither one of us want to be the first to say goodbye. The next thing is, in order to begin to find some keys to self-motivation to drive yourself, in addition to working on yourself, and as you work on yourself, you feel good about yourself, and as you feel better about yourself, you treat yourself differently, develop a health plan. See, you can't feel well and do well if you don't have good health. You can't perform if you don't have your health. Your health is valuable. 